so today is March 14th, 2011. Uh, I am here with uh, Frederick Iriarte. So let's begin by talking about your background and where you come from. So could you tell me about uh, where you were born, or when you were born as well? And go, yes. Yes, uh, I'm born in Paris uh, in 1963, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been kind of witness of the French student revolution. I remember some few things about this time too, when I was children, and I also remember very well about Paris children playground also when I was five years old or so. Mm -hmm. And then I studied art school in uh, beginning in Besançon in east of France, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't feel very good there. So I moved to south of France, to Perpignan, and then I, I followed my studies uh, in the uh, academy in Perpignan. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was 23, I came here to Sweden in Chaiki. Could you say again where you went to art school and when? Uh, I went uh, between uh, 1980 and 84 to okay. the Academy of Art in Perpignan, in south mm -hmm. of France. And who did you study with there? Uh, there was at this time a uh, very big uh, tendency, a big movement about uh, abstract, uh, abstraction, minimalist abstraction. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Tapies, Anthony Tapies, and there is several artists working together with him too, mm -hmm. which were my, my teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, understood the value of abstract painting, n not like a motive, but more like material uh, mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, support surface, mm -hmm. uh, the group, mm -hmm. you may should have. Mm -hmm. Heard about this, mm -hmm. and still was active. I, I I meet them every so mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you were part of this group then? No, it's a part of the reaction of the group. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then when the abstract minimalist uh, came through, uh, but uh, they are very interesting about using dealing with raw material from from mm -hmm. the sea, from the wind, from the plastic, from the texture, uh, textile and mm -hmm. make a com abstract combination and use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was very interesting, but I think it needs more story. And mm -hmm. their story was ending at the level of the material. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no deeper philosophical uh, mm -hmm. uh, message in their painting. Mm -hmm. Then at this time we reacted and we, we become the pop art. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the pop art I saw more interest in that. Uh, there, is, there was a huge possibility to manipulate or to, 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 uh, to give a message to a larger public. Mm -hmm. Now when you say pop art, are you talking about um, New York pop art with yes. Warhol? Okay. Yes. yes. Because there are also the British pop scene as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I know some people from the British pop too. They mm -hmm. came and visit me in my studio or mm -hmm. visit them at the art fair or things like mm -hmm. that. And they are very aware uh, about my works. Mm -hmm. uh, then we make this um, combination of uh, pop art and the French uh, mm -hmm. free figuration, you call it. Mm -hmm. The free figuration is to make, a, to, to, to use all those uh, modern uh, um, pictures and uh, techniques and music in the paintings. Mm -hmm. So it's part of uh, comics and part of video films, of uh, music videos, or uh, publicity, of di different kinds. Mm -hmm. But instead of selling a product, you, you, you sell an idea or a vision or a philosophical uh, um, idea. Mm -hmm. And that's why I thought it was deeper. So I, I use a lot of material in my paintings too, mm -hmm. as well like an abstract minimalist, but mm -hmm. and an abstract expressionist too, mm -hmm. as well. But uh, I, I use a contemporary picture pictures too. Mm -hmm. 
wonderful. Um, so let, let's continue with that idea of what motivated you to come to Sweden. Um, and what year did you come to Sweden? When? Yes. I came uh, in uh, January 86. Can you tell me okay. a little bit more about that first meeting that you had with Harvey Cropper? Because again, today I, w I would like to focus on, on your your interactions with Harvey Cropper, and then uh, in our, our later sessions, yeah. I want to focus on your work. Uh, but could you tell, tell me about that first meeting you had with... Yo, when I meet Harvey first time... Uh... Question, artistic question, and answer hello. And, and then he come back, and then he, he thinks he has been thinking about the time. Even if it's been one month, so he, he remember exactly the, the discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he so we have been very deep in the sense of artistic. some kind of uh, influence on his work as well as his dog of mine. That's very fascinating. Um, what year was that? Or do you remember when that? Uh, it has been several periods and I think through my books you can see uh, a bit uh, of it. But uh, all the time. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I mean, what year was it that you met Harvey? 86. Mm. 86. 86 or 87. And, and that and then I have a friend photograph, you have a studio down by this place too. Then I used to meet a friend photograph where I was uh, sharing a studio also. Mm -hmm. So we have a more often contact at this time too. Mm -hmm. and, um, and did you go to his, because um, did you go to Harvey's studio regularly? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I, need, I need to go to Harvey's studio mm -hmm. regularly for it. I said before I make I give him a painting was called a source of inspiration, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's a combination when we together so we're making a lot of things happen, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, as well as musical things and uh, really? artistic things. Uh, what could you tell me a little bit more about the musical? I'm some a music, musician coming to his place and mm -hmm. then we we discuss and we have a good relation. Then mm -hmm. we make historical. Um, Pieces of music that What type of music? Uh, I call it electro uh, acoustic universal art music. So the, the genre is the electroacoustic universal art music. Yes. And the group is called Unique Sax. Yes. And who is in it? Uh, by it's, uh, we are a uh, famous uh, violinist, uh, Santiago Pinas and uh, Eric Santana de Combat. So it's all people that hang out at Harvey's studio. Yes. Mm -hmm.
cultures are there, mm -hmm. and different from people from very many different countries, uh, totally different culture. Mm -hmm. In some ways, I am fascinating about the can communicating mm -hmm. and uh, appreciate beauty mm -hmm. and uh, creativity mm -hmm. with different culture background mm -hmm. and I'm very fascinating about this so mm -hmm. sometimes maybe it's shock or sometimes mm -hmm. it's uh, complicated com com mm -hmm. did I answer your question you did you <laughs> uh, did absolutely absolutely um, no you did um, no, you didn't. Um, no, you didn't. So yeah. I knew that there was more. And so when I looked at it, I looked at it very quickly, and then I looked at it, mm -hmm. and then I saw. You know, the, but I'm also an art historian. I'm trained to see. Mm -hmm. And so and I saw all of the symbols, which was fascinating to me. This is... Uh a painting which, uh, th this is a real painting. Really. Mm -hmm. uh, I have still uh, in myself uh, some customers, uh, as I said, ten years after, oh, I understand uh, mm -hmm. the painting. So it took ten years for them to look at the painting and then to get all the details so right. all the way. I think there is a lot of more in a painting than there is a film for one or two hours. Exactly. Or, uh, exactly. A lo lot of more things to discover and right. to appreciate and right. mm -hmm. to make you see. And sometimes it takes a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, time has no, no, no meaning in the art. Uh, right, exactly. Uh, yeah. Me, because, you know, and, uh, and for me, with that painting, you know, I, I saw a lot of, I saw a lot. But I know that there's so much more to see. Mm -hmm. Incredible artist. Mm -hmm. in my, Thinking and I, and I yes that's all I can. Now there is different level in the painting. Yeah, uh, it takes years and years in your book yes. for some people yes. to understand the detail. Yeah. How I mean what what made you get to that point and how long did it take you uh, to to get the details? But when I was student, I was making a lot of uh, research. Uh, I, I I tried to make people reacting about my paintings a little mm -hmm. bit. I did not know I paint this and I not know. And then now I see people get afraid, that they get uh, mm -hmm. angry or get... Uh, and I said, ah, there is a reaction, uh, mm -hmm. a active reaction. Mm -hmm. And that's about where a student is just now a day. Mm -hmm. They're just meeting and discovering the reaction of the, uh, of the forms and the colors mm -hmm. and composition and movement and everything and the life and everything. So they, they understand mm -hmm. the... Um, the, the, the reaction you can get from the painting. From this time you can understand the reaction, so then you, you make experience. Mm -hmm. You make strong reaction and a low reaction. And then when you have, and that's at this level the Swedish artist simulation that's to, to know how the reaction. That's very students to know the reaction. But when you know the reaction, you don't have it's not enough. You know, you're not just playing with, with reaction and feelings. I think you need a message. You have to, to communicate a message. And this message is using those reaction feelings. It's like high tunes and low tunes. So when you can use those uh, instruments and communicate an idea or philosophical point of view with feelings, so don't, then you get right. The mm -hmm. problem is to get the right uh, picture mm -hmm. for the right thing. Mm -hmm. Many people can understand because if you don't get the message, so there is something lost on the way, mm -hmm. and the, 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 the artwork will be lost too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, can we take a little break? Yes. Thank you.